Hi, this is Phil Chandler. Today I'd like to talk to you about a product that I've just spotted, new on the market. It's uh, called a two-in-one newt box. I'm quite excited about it. I'm going to tell you why. So here it is. This is the two-in-one newt box as marketed by bshoneybees.co.uk and I don't often do product reviews and um, I'd never take money for doing product reviews. I'd like to retain my independence. So it takes quite a lot to impress me these days with uh, with new products but this is really quite an impressive little box and I'm going to show you why. It's called a two-in-one because it does two things very well I think. First of all it's a standard six frame nuke box, nothing special about that you might think. It's made from high density expanded polystyrene of course which the bees love. I mean I've used this quite a lot now and I must say you know, uh, bees do really enjoy being in these boxes it seems, that's how they behave anyway. But the important thing about this is that it's not only is it a six frame nuke box but it's also can be converted very quickly into a divided nuke box which takes three frames each side. Now this is perfect for queen mating. Each side has its own entrance and you'll notice that the rotary entrance <coughs> discs are different colours which helps the queen, uh, returning queen, coming back from a mating flight to make sure she goes back in the right entrance because hopefully she'll recognise the colour. Um, the divider itself is, fits into a slot so there's no chance of bees getting past it. It's designed uh, to be flush with the top, in fact sl very slightly proud of the top and the, the top of that divider fits into um, a slot in the centre of the feeder. Now, a lot of polynukes, the, the ones I've been using, the ones you can see in the background here, have side feeders. Now, side feeders are okay, but in order to use them with this kind of material, you've got to line them with either something like molten wax, or you've got to put some kind of paint or varnish on them so the water can't seep through the polystyrene, because this stuff is actually slightly porous. So, um, the top feeder I think is actually a better idea and it saves a little bit of width as well, not that that's necessarily a critical factor in most people's apiaries, but uh, it makes the box a little bit more compact and easier to move around. So you've got a, a divided box here which you can use as either a six or two threes and to go on top of it you've got this clever feeder. slightly closer to the camera so you can see it more easily. Right, so I take the lid off. Now the lid is quite a substantial lid. It's, I reckon, probably somewhere like 30 mil thick at the top there. So a good bit of winter insulation. The lid, of course, can be used directly on, t on, the, um, on the box itself. So if you weren't feeding, if you were just using it as two three-frame nukes, you can put the lid on here and there's a central slot which also covers this uh, central divider, making a nice B-tight seal. <clears throat> the feeder itself is cleverly designed so that you can have two colonies in here. If you've got one each side of the divider, they can each come up and feed. Uh, they come up that slot, down that one, and this is a movable um, this is a movable separator so that the feed, the liquid feed can go underneath it and the bees can drink it without having to come into the central area and risk drowning or of course meeting the bees from the other side. There's a, there's a transparent cover over each of the feeders and in the centre here you'll notice there's a thing like a large bath plug which is made of silicone. Now this is for feeding fondant. So if you're feeding fondant in the winter and you've only got one, co one colony in the box, you can remove, well, it's, it, it's optional really, you could remove these um, side panels here to give you more capacity, but it may be okay just to put a lump of fondant right in that centre. I and mean, that's going to hold, well, I would say a couple of, um, something like three kilos, I'm guessing, of, of fondant would go in there. This uh, central plug can be removed and the bees can simply come up through the hole to take the, f the fondant as required. Um, <clears throat> so the silicon plug goes in obviously for you feeding liquid. Something I noticed which isn't obvious on the camera is that the 
this, the, the floor of this feeder is sloping slightly away from the centre, both sides. That's a nice bit of thought by somebody because very often with a, with a top feeder you put feed in there and you come back and there's a pool of food in the middle that the bees can't get to, whereas with a slightly sloping floor it, it's going to drain away right to the bit where the bees are actually taking it. So n nicely thought out. Um, it's, it, it's, it seems very robust, it's made from a, a high density polystyrene. Of course, you know, so I know some of you are going to be thinking, well, you know, what's Phil Chandler, the champion of natural beekeeping, doing, um, endorsing, if you like, a, pro a product made from polystyrene? Well, fair comment, but you have to remember, these things have got a life of around 20 years once they're painted, protected from UV. Uh, and that's quite a decent life for any kind of bee beekeeping product, really. Um, considering the abuse they tend to get. Um, the, uh, yes, the material, obviously, it's polystyrene, it's obviously it's made, it's an oil-based product, but uh, with a long life and the ability to be recycled at the end of that life, um, I, I don't really think there's a major conflict of interest here. Bees love this stuff. I mean, I've, I've had kept bees in polystyrene boxes for, for many years, and they really do seem to enjoy being in them. They're, they, they're, they're much better insulated than wood. And um, they, bees have always been you know, shown, shown all the right signs of, uh, of liking these things. So I don't have any problems with them as far as the bees are concerned. And the, compared to the wood alternatives, shall we say, um, it takes an awful lot of energy to fell a tree, saw it up into planks and then machine it into uh, a usable beehive and you end up with something um, that's usually pretty heavy to move around. Um, is, uh, does, it obviously does can have a life equivalent to these or longer, but, and of course at the end of that life they can be, you know, they're biodegradable if you like, they rot. Um, but of course they, they do tend to rot rather before that and uh, it can obviously cause a lot of problems. Um, with ongoing repairs. So I don't know, I think there's a balance here and I think if these are looked after and been given a, 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 their maximum life and then recycled at the end of it, I don't really have a problem with using these plastics. So there you go, you can make your own mind up about that. Obviously if you prefer to use natural materials, go ahead and do that. These things however are light to move around and if you're doing a lot of queen rearing then you're going to be moving these around probably quite a bit and that's a big advantage. Um, I find anyway. So this is, uh, it's called a two-in-one nuke, it comes from BS Honeybees and you'll find them at bshoneybees.co.uk and um, I haven't used it yet uh, with bees in it but you know this shows all the signs of being a really useful product and I should be using them next year for queen rearing for sure.